What's up everyone on YouTube? Your boy Memphis here coming at you with a little something different today. Uh, as you can see, I have this notebook here. And that's because I was digging through my old stuff the other day. And I found this notebook. And in it's an archetype of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I made uh, roughly eight years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Because this is an Xyz monster and I'm sorry, it must be at least eight years old. No more, no less than that. Something like that, you know. So I figured I'd just go through it. Uh, and, uh, you know, see what you guys think of it. Now, quick disclaimer, this archetype, I looked at it again real quick, but it, it's nothing, like, game-changing or anything. It's just a fun deck I made back in the day. So, uh, let's see. Let's just see how it goes. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it. Uh, this is just some normie monster I made. Some sort of death metal-looking dude with all the chains and spikes and things. Uh, let's see. No, no. Oh, there he is. All right, so first off, we got this. Dude, this is Aeon Geolotech. This is the Aeon archetype. So, this guy is the first member. He's like a big buff dude with rock hands. And he's got this thing. This is an, this is like a, what do you call these things again? Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. But, uh, yeah, he's got, he's got a sundial for a face. That's what it is. He's got a sundial face. That's like the theme of the deck. But, yeah, this guy, he is a level 10 rock monster earth. 4,000 attack and defense. And his effect is you can't be normal summoned or set. And you can only summon him by banishing two Aeon monsters from your hand. And he cannot be targeted. And you can only control one of these dudes. So, it, like I said, this was like eight years ago. I was just getting into Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, it's, I, I never imagined these things as being like game breaking. Like I said, I was thinking this would be like the, like, like the boss of the first season of a show's boss sort of deck. So, you know. It's a big beefy beat stick, if anything else. Can't be targeted or nothing. So, if anything, it kind of looks cool. I like the rock arms. That was actually kind of neat. Uh, so, yeah, that's the first dude. Oh, uh, so we got the, Okay, this guy's shiny AF. This is Aeon Cosmolo Tech. As you can see, he's got like golden stars and things. And he's got four. He's got four sundials. That means he's super powerful. So, this guy states. You can only be special summoned by having three spell or trap cards. Controlling three spell trap cards. So, fairly easy summoning condition, that one. And what does this guy do? He's going to be a special summon by other ways. Once per duel, you can send all spell trap cards to the graveyard from the field. And so, it's basically a once per duel uh, hard beast, or not, heavy storm. So... It's, I mean, for the time, this was pretty good. That was pretty good back when I made it eight years ago, so... It's something. It's something. Oh, and uh, both players can only use this effect once per turn. So, basically, your opponent can steal it. Not that they can steal it, but... Such as that it is. If anything, he's fancy. Look at that guy. He's got, like, the white and the gold. I like that. I really do. Oh, yeah. And he's, uh, I forgot the stats. Same stats as the other guy, except he's a light fanny. Most of these guys are 4K beaters, just so you know. Like I said, boss monster deck. But it makes me think, think of these as Time Lords. They even look like Time Lords. Kinda, a little bit. I mean, they got no legs. Yeah, basically old, yeah, basically Time Lords. You know, I didn't actually watch the anime back then, so kind of came up with them, in the vid, you know, independent and all that. So next up, we got this pigeon looking thing. This is... Uh, Aeon, what's his name? Astrolotech. We just got, like I said, he's got like a wing. He kind of looks like a pigeon. And what, what, I got this like black and green thing here. It's, it's kind of a weird one, this one. But, again, this is a dark winged beast. Again, level 10. Attack and defense 4000. It can only be special summoned when it's the only card in your hand. And it cannot be special summoned by other means. So basically, Empty your hand, special this, or if you get into a top deck situation, this is your saving grace. Uh, once per turn, during either player's turn, you can return a face-up card to its owner's hand. I mean, back then, this was pretty dang good. I mean, this is a once per turn compulse. That's pretty dang sweet. Works on your cards and your opponents. I mean, he may be an ugly looking pigeon, but, you know, a Sterling tech is actually fairly decent. What else we got here? We got a Terran Tech, which is basically, he's got like a golden triangle and he's got like silver wings. 
got an interesting design. Now, this guy has no attack. He has defense of 4,000. Him being a wind fiend monster, interestingly enough. And what do you do again? Turn attack. That's a cannot be special summon except when neither player controls a monster. So basically, first turn special summon this thing from your hand. It cannot be destroyed by battle of card effects. So like you like you see the 4K defense wall basically. So not, not not the most useful member of this archetype, but he's he's got his uses. Got some uses. Oh man, I forgot about this dude. <coughs> oh, poor me. Pardon me, getting over cold. But anyway, this here is a uh, life tech, which is some sort of blue ghost four or six armed dude. And his hour is a his uh, face looks like he's got some kind of weird nose. It's a very odd design here. But basically, what this dude does, <coughs> oh, unprofessional indeed. Okay, four thousand attack defense, water spell caster. Cannot be special summoned except when your life points are 4k or less, so pretty good combination with some other cards there. But what, what am I not remembering cards all of a sudden? I can't think of the words. But anyway, this dude, at every turn he gives you 2,000 of the life points, right? During each of your standby phases, both players gain 2k. So, combine it with battery action, maybe, I don't know, something like that. Uh... It's, it's, it's something. It's more of a comeback -y card, but, you know, it's something. I haven't even mentioned all the synergy with rank 10 trains in this archetype. But we'll get into that when we get into that. Well, now we've got this dude. This is Artista Tech. Who's got, like, you know, his sundial there. He's got, like, musical notes coming out of him for some reason. <coughs> oh, sorry. Golfing. But yes, this guy, being a Fire Aqua, 4,000 attack and defense, level 10. And it says, you can only be special summoned if you control two face-up Aeon monsters. So basically, he's the thing they go for combos. You know, you get two of the other ones out, like Geolo Tech, uh, Turn Attack, something like that. And then, you summon this thing. And this dude has a pretty funky effect, let me tell you what. Once per duel... You can throw a six-sided die and call the result. If you get it right, special summon an Aeon from the hand, ignoring its summoning conditions, except for this dude. So, it's interesting. I mean, if I made it today, I would make it a once-per-turn thing. But then again, with that six, that might be a bit too much. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. So, it's an interesting card. Show it to you one more time. Hello. All right, who we got next? Velocitech. He's got like weird tentacle on. Oh no, the tentacles, but some kind of resin on there. He's got like plates, <coughs> plates with words. That's what these are. And this philosopher man. Let's see. Cannot be special summoned unless both players control no monsters and have no cards in either graveyard. What? No monsters and have no cards in it. So basically, you open with this. Like if this is you play like one of this, and that's pretty much it. Because if, if you draw into this thing, turn two, you're pretty much screwed. Pretty much. So basically, go first. Oh yeah, you have no you have no defense velocity attack. That's pretty uh pretty telling. You have zero. He has zero defense. This is a zero defense fourth K attacker. Uh huh. Let's see. What, it, what else do you do? You gotta have to have some other effect. Let's see. Once per turn, add an Aeon card from deck to hand. All right. So he makes up for his shooter uh, summoning condition with a half decent effect. He searches any card in the deck in the archetype. So eh, something. All right. Now we're on to the Xyz monsters. Like I said, made this during the early Xyz era. <coughs> okay. Okay, okay. So this here is uh, Aeon Hadean. I named these after the four major periods of Earth's uh, history or whatever. The geological history. So this is magma period. As you can see, it's got like magma lines or something. And let's see, what do you do? Attack and defense is zero. Rank 10 needs three Aeon monsters. Being a rock, dark rock monster. When this card is successfully exceeds summoned, send all other cards on the field of the grave 
And this card gets a thousand attack and defense for every card sent to the grave. So, destroys everything. Doesn't even destroy, it just sends them. That's pretty dang early for a send everything to graveyard effect in Yu-Gi-Oh. Dang, young me. You were a monster. Of course, considering the summon condition, kind of makes sense. Uh, so what else does this do? When this card is destroyed by the opponent, being by battle or card effect, special summon uh, Aeon Archeon from your extra deck and attach this card to it as Xyz material. This is the theme of the Xyz of this deck, is that when the first one's destroyed, you summon the next one, and then you attach the old one to it as material to give it more effects. That was the idea I was going for, and we'll see how that goes. Our son, here's Archean, being some sort of fire demon man. And so, what this dude does, he has the same sort of summoning condition, being, of course, a fire pyro. And by removing an Xyz material from this card, inflict like a thousand damage to your opponent for every Aeon card you control. So, kind of a slightly mediocre burn considering the archetype this is in. But that's obviously not the point of the card. The point is if it's destroyed, you can special summon Aeon Proterozoic from the extra deck, attach it to this card, or attach this to that as material. And while this card has Hadean as a material, it cannot be destroyed via card effects. So basically your opponent is forced to destroy it by battle, and considering this is a 4k beef stick, that's actually fairly difficult back in the day. So it, it, it does its job. Does its job. So let's see what uh, Proterozoic does. Oh man. This guy, this guy's some sort of weird art project. I like tentacles. Ugh. It's like an anime protagonist or something in here. So yes, this is Proterozoic being another rank 10 with three Aeon monsters. Oh, the, materi the, the materials are almost always the same. This guy's a wind psychic monster. Fancy. And so what this guy does is, once per turn, attaching material from this card, you can add an Aeon card from empty hand, then discard a card. Come on, man. Uh, Philosotech did that, but better. Well, didn't even try with this guy. And, of course, the usual effect of this is destroyed. Bring out the big, big boss monster. Uh, what was his name again? Phanerozoic? Phanerozoic? And then attach this. And then this guy has... Arch this guy has Archean as material. Its original attack is doubled and cannot be targeted by traps. It was so close. Shaped, yeah. Stat Steel would have made mincemeat out of this thing back in the day. Actually, that's true for most of these cards. But regardless, Proterozoic, eh. Now let's get to the big beefy boss monster. This is the guy I really want to talk about. For sure. Oh, man. Aeon Phanerozoic, being a guy with a tree on his back. And crazy claw arms and clown pants. And a star for a head, if you can see that. You see that? Star head. So yes, this guy has 5,000 attack and defense, being a divine beast of the divine attribute. He's a gold card, he is. And so what this dude does is when he successfully exceeds summoned, you can remove four materials from him. He uses five level 10 Aeons, by the way, for his normal exceed summoning. Uh, you can send all of the cards on the field to the graveyard. So, it's a worse Hadean, interestingly enough. Uh, but also, obviously, you want to know the big effect. If you can equip uh, Fenner's, uh, Proterozoic to this thing, and then he gets this effect. While this card is at least one Xyz material, then it cannot be targeted by effects, and it cannot be removed from the field. Field. Yes, that's right. You thought Dueling Book made the broken cards nowadays? Memphis was doing it ten years ago, eight years ago. Fact is, this card, when summoned via Proterozoic, cannot be targeted by anything, cannot be removed. That means you can't destroy it, you can't bounce it, you can't tribute it. Granted, if your opponent's shape, or no, what's it called, a creature swaps this then you are absolutely doomed in every conceivable method of the wood. So it's like, it's cool if you bring it out, but, uh, you know, it's, it's ridiculous if you lose it. Oh, and also, oh, there's one other thing. 
When this card destroys a monster by battle, gain life points equal to its attack. That makes sense, because it does have a tree on his back, and trees and life and all that good stuff. So there's the monster lineup, an interesting bunch of cards from way back when. Uh, let's see what the spell traps were like. Alright, so first trap card is Aeon Origin, which is legit just a trap monster. That, that's all it really is. It's got this, you know, it's, it's a level, what is it, a level 10, tag and defense 0, and what was it? Yeah, you can discard an Aeon monster to basically get that monster's effects on this for a turn. So, it's basically just, you know, Exceed Spotter. That's all this really is. It's Exceed Spotter. Because it is an Aeon monster, and that way you can summon the Exceeds in this deck. What else we got? Aeon Infinity, which shows more Sundials. More Sundials all the time. This here is a continuous trap card. Which states that Aeon monsters cannot be targeted by card effects. And when the space card sent to the graveyard, add two on Aeon cards from graveyard to hand. Would have preferred that being a spell card, young Memphis. Come on, man. I mean, granted, protects your Aeons from targeting, which is nice. Even though Mount of the Bound Creator is now a thing in there for that would be a lot better choice than this. But if this is like if this leaves the field, you get two cards from the graveyard. So it, 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 it's it's a target for, um, what's it, Magic Planter, if anything. It is a target for that. Next, we got ourselves a Continuous Spell. Very nice. Aeon Divinity, which shows a bunch of, I presume to be, robed men worshipping a sundial, as they should be. And so this card states, Activate only while I control an Aeon monster. At least one. Let's see. Race up Aeon cards cannot be destroyed by card effects, except for Aeon Divinity. And when there are no Aeon monsters, destroy this card. You can only control one Aeon Divinity. So, yeah, basically just more protection. Since I didn't bother building protection into the monsters, like Time Lords, then I just put it on the spell traps. <coughs> put it in there. And let's see, how many cards left? One, two, two more, two more. All right, so Aeon Big Bang, which shows either an explosion or a sunflower, I can't tell, and another hourglass. Hourglass. Sundial. <coughs> hourglass, indeed. Instead of conducting the draw phase, add an Aeon card from deck to hand. This is a continuous spell card. This is terrible. Young Memphis didn't try to make this good. But the last card I checked, this was this is actually a decent one, this last one. This is Aeon Triad with not one. Not two, but three sundials. And this is a normal spell card. It states, you only activate this when you control two face-up Aeon monsters in attack position. Special summon an Aeon from your hand with the same level as those monsters, regardless of its summoning conditions. But you can only activate this once per turn. And also the effects of the Aeon monster are negated. So this is the thing that helps you make the Exceed monsters easier. You have to be Aeon Origin to bring out your trap monster. You bring out an Aeon or whichever order works better. Play this, get your third out, get your Hadean going. Just, just have fun with it. This is a deck for having fun. That's what I always like to do. Because like I said, this is a deck. This is a bunch of monsters that was just... I designed these, you know, to have fun with the game, you know? Because I've never been a big meta freak or anything. So it's just like, I made this silly little archetype. It's all about bringing out these big boys with ridiculous summoning conditions and, you know, just having a, having a go at it. I mean, these are 4K beat sticks before Time Lords were a thing with zero attack. So, that's why I kind of consider them to be, kind of like them, despite the fact that Time Lords came out before I made these. Even though I didn't know Time Lords were a thing when I made these, so it's kind of a weird thing. But regardless, I hope you guys very much liked this little thing I'd show. I, I just wanted to share these. I really did, because it's just an old deck I made forever ago. Uh, I know they're not that good, but I like them, you know? Like, if this was made real, which, you know, that'll never happen, but if it does, I would love to play that deck. So I thank you guys for watching. Here's Jello Attack again. And we're going to sign out. You guys stay frosty. Let me know what you thought of this archetype in the comments, of course. I'll see you guys again next time. The Memphis Accelerate signing out.
Take care, everybody.